Um, thank you so much for having me, and it's wonderful to be with you all today. Um, I'm in Cape Town, and um, my journey has been mainly through um, learning and becoming an anthropologist, um, but really integrating um, technology perspectives and, and working with technology communities um, to really demonstrate why uh, technology sector and the kind of data-driven world and landscape that we're increasingly in needs anthropologists. Um, a lot of my recent work has been um, in consulting and working on projects um, around closing the gender digital divide, um, which has to do both with, um, you know, making sure that women are connected and part of um, the digital world and in leadership and um, both in research and policymaking, um, uh, and also really the ways that we can integrate um, gender responsiveness, women's rights into research and technology uh, policy and data spaces. Um, so today I'll be talking about uh, my work um, and thinking towards a feminist digital ethnography, um, where I go really into the ideas of navigating identity, belonging, and embracing in-betweenness at the frontier of online and offline spaces. Um, so for me, feminist digital ethnography is really around bridging anthropology, technology, and data worlds. Um, of course, anthropology is a study of culture and uses the primary uh, research methodology, uh, which is ethnography. And ethnography um, is all about participating and observing everyday life um, to understand the political, economic, and social uh, phenomenon of our everyday lives. Um, it's really about uh, integrating into communities um, and stepping into maybe becoming an outsider or making um, the familiar strange and the strange familiar, as anthropologists say. Um, it's really about looking at local contexts and thick or what's called small data or narrative data um, in contrast to big data, which is um, the terminology and type of data generally um, uh, preferenced in the technology world and spaces. Um, so what my research and work has really focused on is around why technology engineering and data science communities need anthropology, um, really to understand humans and humanity in the digital age. Um, and I think this is really important because, of course, digital technologies and online spaces have become very much part of the human experience and our culture. Um, they are increasingly disrupting political, economic, social, and cultural systems and our everyday life, um, as we've all experienced um, so, so with such rapid um, change in the last year, especially. Um, so I really, you know, coming from the perspective of anthropology and as an anthropologist and as an ethnographer, um, I really wanted to understand the political economy of technology, um, of binary code, of data systems and algorithms and how digital technologies increasingly define what it means to be a mobile human in the modern world. Um, some of the questions that I was asking as I started to develop my research um, on this, which I started in my master's research um, at the University of Cape Town, uh, were really, how do digital technologies and data intersect with power, culture, borders, belonging, citizenship, and identity, um, the things that make us human? Um, who is represented in digital spaces and places, and who is missing? Who creates digital spaces? And how do digitally mediated spaces and data cultures influence human beings and our potential for knowing and becoming? So I started off um, thinking about this topic actually from a very traditional eth ethnographic um, project and, and field of inquiry. Um, I was studying the concept of conviviality uh, in a place here in Cape Town called Belleville. Um, uh, I was really interested in studying um, the idea of insiders and outsiders um, and how people um, 
come to navigate a kind of social cohesion and living togetherness um, of conviviality, um, really a jovialness um, uh, while navigating uh, public spaces. And I was really interested in Belleville specifically because Belleville is host to um, a very diverse um, community, including many migrant and refugee communities, as well as South Africans who are engaging in um, business, trade, um, there's, it's a, a central um, transit and transport route, um, uh, as well as residential communities. And it's a place where life is really kind of lived on the streets also. Um, and as I was kind of doing my ethnographic research and really just hanging out in Belleville, I came to realize and understand that online spaces were really key extensions of, um, the public sphere and really places where people are living their everyday lives, even as going around, you know, in everyday life um, on the streets, uh, in business and just um, uh, in, in the conviviality and togetherness that was happening in Belleville. And, and this made me really think and realize and, and, and start to, to theorize more about how identity, mobility, citizenship, and belonging are really happening in these in-between spaces, which I, um, uh, I, I called a frontier space. And I think the frontier space and the idea of the frontier when looking at this intersection of online and offline spaces is really important because it actually disrupts the kind of rigid um, identity factors and ways of thinking about um, belonging in the world, whether it's around race, gender, ethnicity, place, etc. And the idea of the frontier really ushers in the possibility for a more fluid identity. Um, and the ability, I think, in research for us to embrace the idea that identity is permanently on the move. So my question was, then, how does the design of online spaces, digital infrastructures and architectures and data replicate or reinforce the idea of either borders or frontiers um, in, as an extension of public space? So what I really wanna emphasize through this is uh, when, when we um, are coming from the humanities or social science um, uh, research worlds and spaces that, when looking at the idea of the field site, digital spaces really are an extension of social worlds and everyday life and, and should be integral to social science and ethnographic research and the idea of the field site. And we see this more and more because the internet is really a foundational structure of the political economy, of information, communication, and increasingly of governance and of people's relationship to the state. Um, and even, uh, in the context of the digital divide and, and the gender digital divide where um, much of the world is not actually uh, connected to the internet and, and, and on digital spaces, um, these, uh, the, the political economy and the way that technology is influencing everyday life still is still impacting people who may not be connected. And therefore it's really important to harness and include their voices and perspectives in research um, and, and their experiences of everyday life to, to inform um, the way that technology is shaping our, our world. Um, so I would say that the field of anthropology and the humanities is incredibly important for looking at issues like digital equality, marginality, mobility, governance, and human rights. Um, in, a, in addition to this kind of frontier space of the online and offline worlds, really challenging the idea um, of, of where identity and culture are, are, are happening, um, they also really challenge, I think, this idea of defining a social group in research. Um, so when we look at um, culture and identity being fluid and across and in between online and offline spaces, I think it really um, enables us to step away from traditional notions of place, community, or shared identity factors that would often be associated with particular sites as analytical factors. For example, the idea that um, uh, the Belleville CBD is like this, or people are like that. Um, it allows us to embrace a flexibility that in fact, there's, you know, a real, there's social and political processes of 
of making place and of, of, of coming together. And so it's um, less about kind of the idea of it being a bounded identity factor and more about embodied practices that shape collective identities. Um, and this might sound really theoretical, but I think that the really important point to make is it's about how we think about flexible and nuanced understanding, understanding of data and, and identity in contrast to uh, in the digital space, what's often you know, objectified, coded or quantitative data, um, which leaves little room for flexibility and mobility. And this is really about acknowledging that the world is permanently on the move. So in, in expanding this towards looking at um, feminist digital ethnography, um, some of the questions that came up in my research and that I continue to, to grapple with and really think about is, what does feminist research and data look like and feel like in a digitally mediated world? Um, how can feminist research at the intersection of online and offline worlds, in fact, disrupt a reliance on binary thinking in the world? Binary being around um, us, them, male, female, citizen, non-citizen, and really um, overcome these kind of um, categories to understand and articulate humanity based on such identities on the move. Um, some other questions for consideration are, what can we, we as researchers do to co-create research um, that creates new possibilities for conviviality or social cohesion and thriving in diversity in a digital world? Um, what do flexible identities look like as data? Um, and this could be, for example, looking at more process-based based methodologies, um, doing co-creation and participatory and collaborative work, um, co-publishing, um, storytelling, looking at data as relationships. And lastly, another question that I, I continue to, to think about and would love to discuss further is really, how can feminist ethnography harness digital spaces and multiple online mediums to support self-representation and gather stories in a way that privileges reliable and authoritative process of knowledge production while opening up academia's traditionally closed publication models. And I think what uh, just to, to wrap up um, with my final slide here, I think what a lot of this is about um, in looking at ethnography and digital ethnography, feminist digital ethnography um, in online spaces is engaging with the politics of data and representation. Um, so if we think of research as really a reflexive uh, interpretive exercise um, where we as researchers are um, applying an interpret interpretation um, to the data and, and to the worlds that they're representing, um, how can we actually shine the mirror on ourselves as researchers and the political economy of knowledge production. And so this uh, poses more questions, which I think are, I think should be really central to um, any study, um, but particularly looking at um, studies of, of the digitally mediated world, where, as I mentioned before, um, much of the world is, is not able to participate um, in knowledge production in the data landscape. Um, so the questions would be, who is at the table? and whose voices are missing in this collective endeavor? Where does authority come from to represent and who speaks for whom, um, particularly in the context of looking at data and representation and the representativeness of data sets, for example. Um, what is the intention of this research and what is my role and who stands to benefit from this research endeavor? And lastly, how do power dynamics and an ethics of representation reinforce systemic inequalities in the public sphere and what can be done to create more inclusive, participatory, and collaborative research processes um, to really turn around that um, inequality of, um, of access to knowledge spaces and of representation um, that are very much reinforced um, through publishing models. Um, so just to, to wrap up there, I think what, for me, this is what it's, what it's really about is um, navigating our own belonging um, as researchers, uh, as we're seeking to engage in, uh, in and across spaces, whether that's in the humanities and social science, in tech communities, in um, you know, STEM communities, um, it, 
really looking at the conviviality of, um, of, of these spaces and how we can create more interdisciplinarity and um, really come into conversation with each other, um, which is why it's so exciting to be here. Um, so really, yeah, around, um, uh, I think the, the, the role of anthropology in particular um, is really important to, to tech sector and tech communities to really promote um, a more collective participation, conviviality and, and solidarity um, as we think about um, what it really means to be human and the idea of communities in, in the digital age. Um, so I will stop there and thank you so much. I welcome any further questions and thank you again so much for having me.